I guess it's time that you all hear my story in its entirety and from start to finish. So I'm 51 years old and it's a really exciting time as a woman, especially a woman in business. My kids are 18 and 20 and I'm starting to see them embark on a journey. And the reason why I share that with you is because I've been a single parent most of my life and had a little stint with a blended family relationship for a couple of years. Um, but when the kids were little, I've, I was one of the girls, I decided, there was a moment that I decided when they were little that I had to be, I was the role model for my girls. And I had to be the best that I could be no matter what life um, circumstance I, was, I found myself in. So I always had that driver in the back of my head is that I was their role model. And so here's a little unfolding of, of my life. When um, I got married at the age of 27 and I started a business almost immediately. I had been fired from almost every single job I've ever had. Uh, Tim Hortons here in Canada, which is like your Dunkin' Donuts in, in the States. Like seriously, who gets fired from that? And the government. I've had three or four government jobs, been fired or let go or, or asked nicely to leave. And I'm like, I'm not fitting in the employee world. And I knew that. I knew I had the entrepreneurial drive. So at the age of 27, I had one false start where I, I was like, yeah, I'm going to start my business. And it's like, no, I'm too scared. Went and got a job as a sales rep for Pure Later Career and got fired three months later. And I'm like, gosh, okay, I'm doing this thing, come hell or high water. But I had this really cool idea for a business and it was in the graphics engineering field and I wasn't anything um, graphically designed or engineer designed. My brain just didn't work that way. But I found a niche and I found um, a, a hole in a service that, that wasn't being provided. And I had just gotten married and my husband was an engineer. And so we started this business or actually I started it first and he, he came on board. It's just too brilliant to not be on board with this business. But Canada was going through a recession in the early 90s, just like you guys have in the US back in 2008. We had this major crash, and I was selling a service to the real estate market. And everyone, and I mean everyone, and you may be able to relate to this, said, what are you doing? You don't know anything about business. It's not the right time to start a business. You're in a recession. You need to go make money first before you can start a business. God, you're crazy. I even had someone say to me, you need to feed the economy here in Canada, not take away from it by trying to start a business. <laughs> I'm like, makes no sense. But I persevered. I didn't listen to anybody. Um, my first year in business, I was entrepreneur of the year. And in five years, we were making seven figures in that business. And that business is still um, around 25 years later. It's still, it's like super successful. I sold the business back in 2005 to my partner and um, went through a divorce and had these two little kids. And now I'm a single mom with these two little kids. But what I had proven to myself was that I could take an idea, build a business, build a super successful business, and I could, I could sell it. So I had the understanding of taking a business from scratch with the mindset of, with a lot of people saying you can't do it, to not listening to people and, and creating a powerful mindset, a powerful marketing strategy so that I could make a ton of money. So it was great. When I um, sold the business, I had about five years of floundering on what am I going to do? And I started to find my life shrinking, my mindset shrinking, because I didn't stimulate it with the right, um, with the right information. And I started to go into that headspace of what I should do, not what I wanted to do. So here's a tip for you guys. If you're in this place of I should do this, or people are telling me I can't do this right now and I should wait, think clearly about what is it that you really want to be doing with your life. And I found myself getting into another relationship, not being really the one that I wanted. I went in it for the wrong reasons. I went in it because I was scared to be alone and, and what was going to happen to me. I started uh, working again in the government. I started to be miserable again. And I'm like, this isn't what I want. I approached 40 and I'm thinking, okay, something's got to change, but I didn't know how to change it. The beautiful moment for me was when I was laid off from the government job. I was actually laid off this time, not fired. And they asked me back and I said, I'll go back part-time because I am going to start my business. And I was like, gung-ho. So um, fast forward, a year into that process, I went full-time in my business. The, the government job ended. I went full-time and I was so excited because I had a partner who was taking care of the kids, the house, the bills, all of it. 
perfect opportunity for me to go full time, right? A little bit, what, what would you call it, risk free? Well, here's where the story gets super juicy. 30 days after starting my business, right, full time, my partner says, Odette, we need to talk. And you know, when you hear those words, we need to talk, you know that it's not going to end well for you. And he does the talking and I do the listening. And he says, it's not working out. You need to move out. And I'm like, God, what am I going to do? I just started my business. I can't move out. How am I going to pay the bills? What about my kids? I can't do this. Now is not the right time. Well, if that wasn't enough, Honest to goodness, 30 days later, my mom, she was 80 years old at the time, she fell and she broke her hip. A few months later, my dad, who was 85, he fell and he broke his hip. So now I have both of my parents, who are elderly, in two separate long-term care facilities across town, and I live two and a half hours away. Now I am really thinking, I can't do this, the stress, the pressure, I gotta move, my parents are in the hospital, how do I, how do I navigate all of this? And I have young kids. Unfortunately, both of my par parents passed away within two months of each other. And my future's gone, my past is gone, and I'm left with my present. And here's what happened. I went to bed one night with kind of feeling yucky. You know, and you just feel like you just want to flop into bed and, you know, oh my God, I can't wait till this day's over kind of thing. I flop into bed and uh, overnight, some invisible force snuck into my room and pinched the nerves on either side of my neck. So when I woke up, I had no feeling or movement in my arms or in my hands. I had woken up paralyzed. And I was a walking metaphor at this point. The future's gone, the, the, the past is gone, the, my, my present, I'm paralyzed, right? Like, I mean, walking metaphor or what? And I had hit my proverbial rock bottom because I just didn't know what to do anymore. I was in this place of how, first of all, how can I survive this? And I didn't know the prognosis of, of the acute paralysis, which by the way, lasted for about 18 months. And just to give you a, a, a zoned in version of, of my life, the weekend that we had this funeral service for my mom was January, uh, sorry, June 11th, which was my sister's birthday. That same weekend on the Sunday on June 12th, I moved out of the family home with my two kids. So that weekend was a real um, uh, metaphoric closure of past and future and moved into my new home, which was a, a, across town into a new city that Sunday. And I remember getting into bed and thinking, okay, it's nine o'clock going, wow, Monday, it's, you know, June 13th, it's my, my new life. And I still had the paralysis. The, the thing with the paralysis was that I could maybe get about 10 or 20% use of my arms and my hands throughout the day. But as soon as I went to bed at night, my, the, the, the nerves would seize and my hands would be all curled in. Like I, I had no movement or feeling and my hands were all crippled in. I had to pry them apart every morning. And my daughters were in grade seven and nine at the time. So for how are we already 11 and 13? And they had to get me out of bed every morning. They had to roll me out of bed. They had to sit me up. They had to bring me down to the kitchen. Um, I lost about 15 pounds. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're that in your emotional state, in a, um, a mental state, in a, mere, uh, a spiritual state, for me, I called it emotional and spiritually bankrupt. You, your will decreases and your strength is just completely shot to hell, or it was for me. So, it was like every morning I'd pass out. I'd get up and I'd pass out and I'd have to go through this process. I'd have to have my juice and my, my breakfast. So instead of me feeding my kids breakfast in the morning, they were helping me. And here's the point, I'm gonna take it back to the beginning of the story when I said that it was my job to be the best role model that I could be for my kids. And when I had moved out and I had that moment, they went to school and it, it was like, you know, here's what I got to do. I have to pull up my socks. I have to be the best I can be. I have to make this business work because the first eight months of business, my relationship ended. I moved. My parents passed away. I had this acute paralysis. And you're like, why even bother going on? But it was that vow that I had to myself from day one when my kids were born. So within that year, 
I created a, a six figure business. I started to regain the use of my arms slowly. And I, I often tell this story about how I got through my day. Cause I say, how did you get through your day? Well, <clears throat> I, so I somehow got clients. I don't know how I did it, but I had just a lot of clients. So my days would look like this. I would coach for an hour and then I would cry my heart out for 15 minutes. I'd coach for an hour, bawl my eyes out for another 15 minutes. So I'd coach, cry, coach, cry all day long, day after day, week after week, month after month. And that was my healing process was to get it out of my system, but to be in service of other people to help them get what they wanted in their life. And I was really afraid to share my, my full on story. And it took a couple of years for me to be able to share that story because um, it's vulnerable and I didn't want people to think I was a loser. I didn't want people to think I was no good or I was a lousy coach or a lousy mom or all of that stuff that was going through my head. And I really had to work through that process and I didn't do it alone. So if you're going through something or anything, it doesn't have to be to that extent, don't go through it alone. So, and it's not just your girlfriends with a glass of wine, although that, that was very helpful. It was also about finding your own inner resources of, of your self-help, basically. And I reached out to a mindset coach um, who really helped me with the mindset piece around my self-worth and belief in myself that I could really create something amazing with my business marketing coach as well who helped me with the marketing and the money and and how to build a business both online and offline because my first business was great but it was all offline right? it was all about picking up the phone and doing um, five minute office presentations all over the city and then all over the all over the, all over the country <clears throat> and it was just how to incorporate all of that in my business so when you're an entrepreneur whether it's a coach or you're you sell jewelry or whatever it is that you're doing it is all about who you are as a person who do you want to be as a person? Who do you, what role model um, are you to people? What do you want to be known for in your industry? And all of that is, I got to tell you, as you probably know, is a mind game. It's a mind warp. And you can fall prey to it or you can use it as a leverage point. So my, my, my tip to you for today, and I say tip, is because I want you to walk away with something of value here, not just to hear my story, is take a look at your own story, take at your own, own, own life and where, you're, where you are right now. Take a look at where you want to go. What is that big vision that you have for yourself? And don't have a judgment around, well, when the kids are older, when the kids are younger, um, you know, when my parents um, you know, retire, when they move away. Don't have a judgment. Just what do you want? If it's a crazy, wild idea, then just write it down. Because no one needs to know what it is, so you don't have anyone looking over your shoulder. But write down what your crazy, wild want is. And instead of looking at how do I get there, just get emotionally connected to what it is that you want. Because here's the thing. Everything is possible. And everything is what I call figure outable. If you want something, it is possible for you to go after it and for you to get it. The problem with most people is that they focus on the how first, and that's wrong. You've got to focus on the what, the why, the where, the when, the who, all of that. Then the how follows naturally. So I encourage you to uncover what your story is. Uncover what that, the true story is and uncover what the story that you're telling yourself is, and you're going to find that they're different. So follow your heart and go after what you want. Take a look at the story of your life and the story of your life and all the experiences that you have. I call them the soul story moments because they come from the soul. Lead you to the place where you are today. Now it's your decision. Which, which direction are you going to go? Which fork in the road are you going to go? The, the couldn't, the, sorry, the should route or are you going to go down the, the I want route? I say thank you very much for listening and I really hope that if I've changed one person's life opinion um, or ideas about themselves and how you're going to move forward that I have made the impact in the world. I want you to do the same thing. It's called what pay it forward. Thanks. Ciao.